Welcome to the first episode of Tech Notes, where today we'll be talking about center of gravity. To measure your vehicle's center of gravity, you're going to need some basic stuff. Four scales, like some of these Amazon kitchen scales, or if you're feeling particularly baller with some money to throw around, you can get a RC-specific set of corner balancing scales. Then you're going to want one of those little curly, soft, roll-up tape measure things whose name escapes me so much that I don't even know what to Google to try to find out what it's actually called. You're also going to need something flat. Flat and level and big enough to accommodate whatever vehicle you're trying to find the center of gravity for. I don't have a spot that's flat enough or level enough so I had to make like a leveling station which is what you see here. The materials list then is pretty short. You'll need four scales whether they be little kitchen scales from Amazon or a set of RC specific chassis balancing scales. A flat board or area big enough to fit the scales and your vehicle. One of those curly measuring tapes. What I forgot to mention, two objects that are the same size. I use little Tamiya paint cans because they're like the perfect size. And then you'll need something to write some stuff down. And obviously this would work, but I mean, obviously I think we can do better. And I'll have a link to download that sheet from my Google Drive. Then you're gonna take those four scales and put them on your board or flat surface or whatever you intend to use. I made marks to give me an idea of where they need to line up for typical wheelbases and lays out, uh, layouts of rigs that I'll be putting on here. Then, I probably also forgot to mention, set the scales to pounds because the calculator that we're gonna use operates in pounds. Very American. After you give the suspension a little jiggle, let it sit for a few moments and the vehicle will come to rest. Even if it's not directly centered on the scale pads, it's, it's gonna rest out to what the weights are. Then you're gonna look at all those numbers and you're gonna write them down on the sheet. I usually take this moment to record the circumference of one of the tires. All the tires should be the same. So you'll get, you, you only have to measure one tire and you'll have all four. Once you've recorded the level weights of the four wheels, you're going to want to take your two objects, they're my paint cans, and put them on the rear scale pads and then place the vehicle on that angle to get those numbers. Give it a little shimmy again and then write them down. So now you'll have a full sheet, which will look something like this, only with better or worse penmanship. And you're going to take that sheet and you're going to go to the Longacre website. I will have the link to this in the description. Then it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers from the worksheet into the CGH calculator, which does a bunch of trigonometry, and I was told there would be no math. So there's minimal arithmetic that you have to do outside of the calculator. Then behold, you will have a whole sheet full of numbers. And the one that is important here is that one highlighted in yellow, 4.15 inches. That's the CGH, the center of gravity height, from the ground. That's what we want to know. Why do we want to know that? Because any change we make, any part we put on or take off, is going to affect that CGH. The ecto here is sitting on 5-inch tires, and then there's the CGH. It's going back and forth between the CGH, between the Class 1 tires, and a normal class two, class three tire. And you might notice here, as no other changes were made, the change in CGH is pretty much just the height of the tire. It's raised by the amount that the tire got taller, the regular 4.8 inch tire versus a 4.1 class one tire. But anything you add is gonna affect that CGH. It's gonna affect how the the, the rig handles both ascending and descending. So once you've established this, what we'll call a baseline number, you then have a frame of reference for any changes you make from then on. 
you just toss it on the scales, you get your new numbers, you can find out if the CGH moved up or down. That's what a normal person does. But if you're me, you take all the rest of the rigs you've got lying around and you do the CGH calculations for all of them. Because it can form out to, it, it's very informative. You find out that most rigs, especially in their stock format, are gonna have a center of gravity that falls roughly into the same window. Uh, Blue Sky High and Colonel Mustard have almost identical CGHs, despite radically different resting weights. Daphne, I think, has the same CGH as Colonel Mustard, but handles significantly better. Uh, a stock TRX-4 Defender has a much lower CGH than I would have expected, but what happens is it transfers it badly. I made a bunch of mistakes adding parts to this. You'll notice the CGH is the highest of any of the rigs on Jolly Green. And then we wrap up with Mutation and Zoidberg, who have the same CGH from the ground, but behave radically differently because of the tire size and the completely bottomed out suspension on Mutation versus the more balanced normal behaving suspension on Zoidberg. Then I have a breakdown sheet, which I thought I had sorted by center of gravity from the ground, but I had apparently sorted by weight distribution, which is surprising in some, not surprising for mutation, as it basically has no front and no rear, so it's got a perfect 50-50 split. But uh, Lil Yellow passed Blue Sky High when there was a tire switch, which I guess I should address now. Here's the sheet from when it was on the Class 1 tires, and there's the image we saw before. It had by far the lowest center of gravity with those tires. But as you will see in the upcoming Round 2 video of Crawler Cross Raid, a tire swap had to be made because the loss of ground clearance with those class ones was too severe. So small spoiler alert, but there it is. And if anything, I hope you learned something. I don't know how many people are going to be nuts enough to go out and buy four identical scales just to weigh RC cars. They do come in handy for other stuff, but anyway. I hope to have more tech notes in the future and uh if you liked what you saw give a like if you're not subscribed please do and i'll see you in the next one